Hey friends, this is a short video about equivalent fractions. So one of the first things that we need to know when we're talking about equivalent fractions is that we need to apply the identity property. The identity property says that anything times one is gonna be equal to whatever that number is. So if it was, um, let's just say, a times one is A, if we're talking about it in algebraic terms. So if I plugged in five here, five times one is gonna be five. If I plug in seven, seven times one is gonna be seven. Okay, the same thing works when we're talking about fractions. So two thirds times one whole is going to be two thirds. Okay, we can apply this identity property to also make an equivalent fraction. So I know that one whole is equal to a lot of different things. For example, if I have two halves, that's the same thing as one whole. If I have three half, uh, three thirds, I'm sorry, it's the same thing as one whole. So is four fourths, so is five fifths, so is ten tenths, and I could keep going on and on as long as the numerator and the denominator are the same, okay? So I can use this, this idea here that all these things technically are the same thing as one whole, okay, to create an equivalent fraction. So two thirds times, let's say two halves, okay, this is the same thing as one, okay? It's gonna give me an equivalent fraction. So I multiply the numerators, two times two is four, three times two is six. So my new fraction is four sixths. And this works because if I were to draw this picture, okay, and I drew two thirds, okay, and then I drew four sixths, one, two, three, four, it would represent the same amount, it's the same value, it's just cut up into more pieces. Okay, so one of the things that we're trying to get the students to understand is why this strategy works. And it works because it is the identity property. It's like multiplying by one. Okay, so in class on Tuesday, they are going to work on an activity where they're going to determine if each pair of fractions are equivalent. They're going to write yes if it's true and no if it's not true. So for example, I've got to figure out what I would have multiplied by. 2 thirds times what whole is going to equal 6 ninths? Okay, it has to be the same number in the numerator and the denominator. Well, I know 2 times 3 is 6, so that means that I have to check the, the denominator. 3 times 3 is 9. Hmm, that's true. Yes, these are equivalent. Okay, so now I'm going to go down here to the bottom one, and I'm going to say, well, 3 fifths times what whole is going to equal 6 eighths. Okay, 3 times what is 6? 3 times 2. So that means it would have to be 2 halves. Okay, 3 times 2 is 6, that's true. 5 times 2 is not 8. So these are not equivalent. No, that would not work. Okay, an additional thing that the students are going to have to do is they're going to have to figure out what would go in the blank. Okay, so I know that if I multiply 3 fourths times some whole, I'm going to get something that's equivalent to it, okay, a new fraction. So four times two is eight, so if I multiply by two halves, which is the same thing as one whole, three times two is six, four times two is eight, so my answer is six right there. They also may need to divide, because if we divide by one, for example, if we had um, five divided by one, we'd still get five. Same thing works for fractions. So four sixths, divided by some whole is going to equal how many thirds? Okay, well I know that 6 divided by 2 is 3, so I'm just going to put 2 halves here. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So I now know that 2 thirds is the same thing as 4 sixths. Okay, again this is equivalent fractions and we are applying the um, identity property in order to figure out what these equivalent fractions are.